Hey everyone, this is Jackson from Ghost of Gamers, and I'm here with the top laner of Evil Geniuses, Wicked. Uh, you guys came in here right after Super Week. How tired are you guys after playing so many days in a row, coming from LCS and then going straight into this event? I'm not really that tired. Like, we used to play tournaments, for example, MLG. You get tired there because you don't get enough sleep, you have too many matches. But here we get enough sleep, we get what we need, so I don't think we're too tired. We just didn't have time to practice new things. And about preparation, uh, a lot of teams like they have different styles of how long they want to practice versus how long they want to you know, study it out and, and take breaks and whatnot. So uh, what's the kind of ratio for your team when you're studying uh, and playing games? Like, Is it like a half and half kind of thing or do you game more or watch replays more? Like, What do you think is more important, the knowledge or the grinding experience? So I think you get the knowledge from playing team practice, five versus five with the team. So we're playing around half the day team practice and half the day solo queue because in solo queue you gain a lot of individual skills, you learn new things because you play with a lot of different players that you would never learn in a team practice because you would go all the same things over and over again, it's a routine in team practice. But in solo queue there might be something new you learn, you see a player doing something that's not normal and you learn and you're like, oh my god, that's really good, we should do this. That's interesting because you're like the third person now that has said uh, solo queue is actually really beneficial for uh, like team play just because of the mechanical skill you get in lane. So, uh, next question is uh, like you you kind of have stopped playing Aurelia a little bit more lately because of the like you know the, how season three works and how attack speeds were nerfed. But what do you think about Irelia now with Blade of the Ruin King? Even after the the hot fix nerf, do you think that's going to bring her back into the spotlight? So. It doesn't really matter much what I think of her because my team doesn't like her and don't want me to play her. So it doesn't matter that much before she becomes overpowered and I can play her again. So I just have to wait till she becomes overpowered and then I'm going to pick her up again. Now way back even uh, in the beginning of Season 2, uh, you, you and Hotshot had this thing where you said you had a secret that only you guys knew on how to win the top lane. And this was before a lot of the game mechanics were really explored. Now I wanted to ask, was this just like freezing the lane, was that all the secret was or was there more to it? The secret gotta stay secret. Okay, so it wasn't just freezing the lane because that was what pretty much everybody thought it was, is just freezing the lane and keeping the advantage at the time when nobody really knew how to control the creep waves. Can't say anything to it. Okay, uh, so what are you more comfortable with? Are you more comfortable with the 1v2 or the, or the 1v1 top lane? Because uh, there's been a big shift back into 2v2 bottom lane with 1v1 top lane. So uh, is this something you're comfortable with switching back into or have you been more accustomed to 1v2ing lately? So I feel like if I get to 1 versus 1 the opponent, I mostly win like almost all the time. Often it's joint interference and so on, so I might lose still, but mostly I win if it's 1 versus 1. If it's 1v2, I can't really win because it depends a lot on me farming and it depends on my 2 vs 1 lane winning their lane. So it's not up to me anymore and I can't really decide the winning factor. I don't have as much impact. Now speaking of jungle interference, uh, how, do you, how is your relationship with Snoopy as far as jungling? Because a lot of people uh, like prefer and believe that the top lane is the most influential lane when uh, affected by jungle ganks. Now do you, do you, are you kind of the kind of top laner that prefers him to come snowball your lane or do you, are you confident enough in your 1v1 that you kind of just ask him to go elsewhere and kind of snowball the other lanes? Well, if it was up to me, Snoopy would be sitting in my boost all day. Okay, uh, but that's kind of difficult with like how, how people start with wards and pots and stuff. So, do you think uh, top lane's been a lot more less jungle pressure now that you know the people are starting with elixirs and ward or maybe just potions and wards? Like, do you think that's made a, the laning phase a little more like even, like stagnant and whatnot? I think that top lane is still the lane that got the most impact because you're one versus one and it's a long lane. So if you manage to get a kill off, you can freeze it all day. People just need to start buying ping wards and coordinate the gang and make it from level one. We need to gank at minute 3.30, be going to do it, use the pink ward, kill him. Now a while ago in a, in a profile article on GG Chronicle, you said that it was really difficult for you to get into pro gaming because your parents were very old fashioned and, and like, you know, didn't really agree with it or were a little bit skeptical at first. So how are they now that you've gotten so popular and like, you know, you, you've, do, you've done so well and you, you earn a, quite a hefty living off of playing League of Legends, like, do you guys talk about it a lot? Do they follow League of Legends now and kind of understand how it works? Like, how, how, is there, how are they feeling about that now? So my parents watched almost all my games and they support me. The thing was in the start that I had to work, I had to school and I couldn't keep up with everything. So I wanted to quit my job and I was like, I'm quitting my job. Then my parents were like, no, because I didn't have any income from League at that point. I was gonna get income, but the problem with eSport is that often you get the money after three months, six months, a year, and you never know when you get the money and sometimes you don't even get it. So 
that's a big problem. And my parents were like, well, yeah, you get money, but you never got it. It's like fantasy money, right? And they didn't want to quit the job, but I was like, yeah, I don't care. And then the day after, I just quit. Okay. Now, you used to be on SK Gaming along with Snoopy, and part of the reason why you stopped playing with uh, SK Gaming is you thought they weren't really as serious as you wanted to be and get, wouldn't get you as far as where you wanted to be. So, looking now, how, how do you feel that they're doing now that, you know, it's the LCS and everybody's taking things a little bit more serious than in uh, Season 1 or 2? Uh, do, you, do you think they're doing a lot stronger now, and is your relationship with most of SK pretty strong still? I still have a really good relationship with SK. I think there's more to it, like it was also business and other things that was a problem because we disagreed on a lot of things. And the serious level, yep, of course if you can get more out of it, you're going to be more serious than if it's actually a big opportunity. Because you can, before you could rate school as better than League of Legends, but League of Legends was more fun. But now League of Legends is equally good to school because you can actually earn a living off it. I think they're very serious now and they're a really good team and they're playing really good. Now, uh, when you were on SK, you were actually more considered the captain of the team. And recently, I don't know if it was just due to popularity or, or like you know, just hype. But uh, like Snoopy is pretty much considered the captain now. But that, does that really influence your guys? Who who pick? Who makes the calls? Who affects the uh, drafts and lining phase? And like who really makes the the calls in the team fights and organizes? Or are you guys kind of like really individual about that? Or is there actually like one shot caller that kind of like coordinates everything? So I don't feel like. We have a captain as and so, it's just like everyone does whatever they want and we call what we think we should do and everything. And in the games, we don't have a captain in the games, it's more just outside. Uh, because all the websites, you need to have a captain, who's the captain, who does this, and you need someone to coordinate the things. So that's pretty much that. Alright, and uh, when you guys do have the free time, is there anything you guys do together, like, as just as friends outside of, you know, just playing League of Legends all day, like, is there anything you do to relax? So we were talking about maybe arranging a paintball match against Fnatic or SK because that'd be awesome. You can get to shoot your opponents in real life. That'd be great. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Uh, that'd be something I definitely look forward to. Now, uh, uh, with the with the LCS going on at the same time as an international event, kind of like right after Super Week, do you think that maybe people that are in the LCS already are going to put a little effort into international tournaments because there's so much pressure already with the LCS? Like. Do you think this kind of makes international tournaments a little less of a big deal and maybe, I don't know, players won't really give it their all now that LCS is so important? I don't, I don't know, like, the LCS is really important, but it's also way more relaxed. There's only a hundred people watching you. It feels like a small family in a way, like, you just go there, it's all friends, most of the people, they're new there, but it's still cool to just meet them and have fun. And I don't feel like there's any pressure in the LCS matches compared to a tournament, because at a tournament, you have thousands of people watching you in your face. Like, there's a lot of people watching from streams, but you don't see them, so they don't make you nervous in the same way. Alright, well, that was... Uh that was actually a great answer. So uh, anyway, is there any shout outs you want to give to your fans, your sponsors or anything before we close out this interview? I'm going to give a shout out to Raycall because they're a really good sponsor. They help us with our communication and team practice and it's just great. Communication is really important. Then Razer and Astro because they have always been supporting us for a long time. Alright guys, that was uh, Wicked Top Laner for uh, uh, sorry, Evil Geniuses and uh, we'll keep you guys in, uh, tuned in for the rest of the weekend with Ghosty Gamers.